How's it going, lads? So, Chelsea won, Manchester City 3. New year, not an entirely new Chelsea. Same results that we've been seeing for our last few games. Another defeat, not a good way to kick off 2021. In a way, I would say that only losing by two goals flattered us. Man City definitely could have scored more. But then in other ways, there were a few positives from this game. We started it well, we finished it well. But unfortunately, there's a good... 60, 65, 70 minutes in between that we were very, very poor in. So let's have a look at some player ratings. Edward Mendy, 6 out of 10. First goal, he did get a fingertip to it, but I think there was always just too much pace in it for him to keep it out. Second goal, yes, he was beaten at the near post, but I mean, Phil Foden was about six yards away when he took the shot. I don't think any goalkeeper was ever going to react to that. Same again for the third goal. I actually think he did everything he could to keep Raheem Sterling out. He didn't commit, give away a penalty. He threw himself down to the ground, just covered the goal. Unfortunately, the ball rebounds out to Kevin De Bruyne, ends up in the back of the net anyway. Second half, though, he was quite spectacular. He made two, maybe three really good saves to stop the scoreline from getting proper embarrassing because I was having flashbacks of that recent 6-0 drubbing we took to Man City. Thankfully, Mendy was one player on the pitch who was willing to prevent something like that from happening again. This is Bill Equator, 4 out of 10. He was nutmegged for the Manchester City second goal and that wasn't the only time that he was shown up in this game. On top of that, going forward, he's just not Rhys James. He's not even Cesar Azpilicueta of two years ago. He just he looks a bit of a shadow of himself, Azpilicueta. I don't know if it's because he's been dropped or if it's just age catching up with them. He does still fight for the shirt. Can't say he doesn't do that. But unfortunately, the performance just wasn't there today. Kurt Zuma, 5 out of 10. Zuma wasn't awful in this game. I can't pick out a moment for any of the three goals where I was like, yeah, Zuma should have done better there. But throughout the game, his performance was mixed. He did have a few solid tackles and his passing into the midfield was better than it usually is from him. So I was impressed with that. But then there was also moments where he was just outpaced, outmuscled. I mean, there was that incident in the first half where Phil Foden did both to him. I mean, Phil Foden shrugging off Kurt Zuma was about as comical to look at as you can imagine it was. But it happened. Not exactly a good moment for Zuma. He didn't have many good moments in this game. And yeah, he has to settle for a middle of the road rating. Thiago Silva, 4 out of 10. For the most part, Silva has been spectacular for us this season. He hasn't put too many bad performances in. He's probably been our best signing of the summer, at least given on performances so far. But in this one, he looked every day of his 36 years old. He looked sluggish, jaded. I mean, that first Manchester City goal from Ilkay Gundogan, I think that Silva should have closed that one down. He didn't because he was a yard off the pace. It wasn't the only moment that he looked out of sorts in this game and hopefully he picks it up for the games to come. Ben Chilwell, 5 out of 10. Defensively, I don't remember too much from Chilwell. I don't recall him making any spectacular clearances or tackles. Going forward, he was better than Atbil Equata. He put a few decent balls into the box that we were just unlucky, I would say, that nobody was willing or able to get onto the end of. I think the fact that he was so quiet was due to the fact that Sterling was put marking him. His pace definitely nullified a lot of Ben Chilwell's threat going forward. Not his best game, not his worst either though. Golo Conte, 4 out of 10. Speaking of players that didn't have their best game, that's N'Golo Conte right here. In fact, he possibly did have his worst game of the season. In possession, so sloppy, gave it away on multiple occasions. And then defensively, Definitely looked off it. I mean, that third Manchester City goal where he just pinged the ball forward aimlessly, gets caught on the counter-attack. Yes, he did do well to get back into position to put Sterling off, but at the end of the day, it wasn't enough. On top of that, he gets himself booked in very uncante like fashion where he was basically just unwilling to track the runner and haul him down instead. Very disappointing to see from him, but we know how much he is capable of, so I reckon he'll still start the next game. Mateo Kovacic, 2 out of 10. It was just a bit of a nothing performance from Mateo Kovacic here. I mean, 
I don't think he even knows what he's in the team to do. Is he there to go forward? Is he there to defend? I don't know watching him. He doesn't seem to know. He doesn't do either very well, at least not in recent games. I think that Havertz shouldn't have started a game as big as this because of his recent form. But I don't think Kovacic was the answer either. Personally, I think Billy Gilmore was the put, one to put in here. And when he did come on, Gilmore looked lively. So you can't say that wouldn't have been justified. But that's one of a few poor performances from Kovacic in recent weeks. So I don't know how much longer he's going to stay in that starting lineup. Mason Mount, 5 out of 10. Look, we already know that Kante's in the team to defend. And as I've already said, Kovacic pretty much did nothing this game. So that leaves it all to Mason Mount in the midfield to do everything from a creative perspective. And it's not really fair to ask it of him. He can't do it all on his own. That being said, the few chances that he was on the ball in this one, he didn't really execute the pass that was necessary. A couple of occasions, he did well enough to release Pulisic usually. But for the most part, he didn't really have the impact I would have wanted. Hakim Ziyech, 4 out of 10. I don't want to be too harsh on Ziyech here because he's just back after nearly a month out, I think. So obviously he's going to need time to get some fitness into his legs. I don't know if this was the right game to start him in. I definitely would have gone with hudson Adoy, who's played the last few games and played well in them. Ziyech started well when Chelsea had that bright moment in the first 10 minutes or so. Ziyech was part of that. But after we went down... His head was one of the ones that dropped. He fell out of the game entirely and I wasn't surprised at all when he was subbed off reasonably early in the second half. Kristen Pulisic, 7 out of 10. Pretty much the closest we're going to come to talking about a positive performance here. Pulisic pretty much tried to do it all on his own in this game because he knew that nobody else in the team was going to. So many occasions he spun, turned, put on the ass a Man City defender then maybe did the same thing to another one, but there was just no final ball from him. And that's not entirely his fault. A lot of the time it was because the final ball just wasn't there. The option wasn't there for him. But still, hopefully he can continue this bravado and confidence that he seems to have. He seems to be the only person in the team that has it at the moment. But yeah, hopefully he continues it. It starts to yield results and it maybe infects the rest of the team. Timo Werner, 3 out of 10. The start of this game... I was looking at Werner and I was like, this is the one. He's looking good. He looks lively. He's playing through the middle and he seems happier about it. And then we go 1-0 down and his head is the first to go down with it because after that he just falls out of the game pretty much entirely. Things could have been different if he had been given that penalty. It was right on the edge of the box. VAR didn't even seem too interested in it at all. I'm not going to go on about it as if getting that penalty would have changed the game because at the end of the day, Man City steamrolled us and played around us for fun for the most part. So yeah, maybe going 1-0 up would have got, made things go differently. Probably it wouldn't have though. Um, in like the last few minutes, Werner tried to take a corner and instead of kicking the ball, he kicked the corner flag and stubbed his toe. So yeah, that pretty much sums him up in this game. To finish, I'm going to talk about the three players that came on. Billy Gilmore, Kai Havertz and Callum Hudson-Odoi. I was surprised that Tammy and Giroud didn't come on. I still think one of them should have come on, but they didn't. So let's just look at the three that did. And I think all three of them did really well. Um, Hudson-Odoi definitely added a bit of spark to us for the last 20 minutes. Billy Gilmore controlled the midfield better than Kovacic or Kante did for the entire game in the 20 minutes or so he was on. And Havertz, this is probably the best spell I've seen from him all season in the Premier League at least. And he got the assist for our consolation goal. hudson Adoy scored our consolation goal. So yeah, coming up against Morecambe next in the FA Cup, followed by Fulham. I think all three of these players could be worthy of a start. Anyway, that's, that's it for this one. A bit of a downer, I know. But if you still enjoyed, leave a like, comment whether you agree, disagree with my ratings, subscribe for more footy chats, and hopefully I'll see you all in the next video.